All right, I'll, I'll ease back into it. I know some people are kind of rolling back in. Uh, general, yeah, if, if you have any questions, feel free to throw them in the chat. Um, you know, we're also more than happy to take verbal questions. Um, I'll kind of, what we have set up, short presentation, kind of going over the protocol, uh, where we are with the protocol, next steps. Flex here, who's the the, uh, the lead dev, it'll be doing a brief demo. It's more of just a kind of back end back end demo um, showing kind of how uh, the protocol is proceeding through testing. And then, yeah, just we'll power through that, then open to really any and all questions people have or then happy to take them uh, verbally. If you don't feel comfortable uh, popping in verbally, throw it in the chat and I'll make sure to you know crank through them at the end. All right, we're looking pretty good. So first of all, uh, zero, zero DAO, and you'll start seeing us use the zero DAO term around. Um, we basically rebranded zero confirmation. So I was using zero confirmation when we were talking earlier. If you look at the BIP, it was referencing zero confirmation. But as we're rolling into the DAO, we're rolling it into to zero DAO. So it's all the same thing, same people, same product, um, just a little bit of a rebrand. Haven't updated the memes yet. So I'll have to get around to that. It just hasn't been, I guess, the, the, the highest priority. But what does zero confirmation, what does zero DAO do? Um, makes RenVM go fast, pretty much. Uh, just also want to get the terminology baseline as we kind of go through the, the presentation, go through the, what, the, what the protocol does. Um, zero DAO is the DAO. Um, it'll be governed by the zero token, just kind of like Badger DAO is governed by Badger. Um, we'll have a similar kind of process. It's a very different project in that, you know, we're kind of starting very product protocol first, and that'll be managed. Different parameters of that, of that protocol will be managed where, you know, Badger is more of a community ecosystem kind of project. So um, we'll be doing similar things as though as keeping uh, procedures, uh, safety procedures in place and kind of doing the decentralization over time when it's safe. So the protocol will probably largely be um, managed by either multi-sig or a couple, uh, by a multi-sig to start. And then different components as it becomes safe and people feel good about it, we can start kind of you know, fully decentralizing and moving it to pure token votes, things like that. Uh, so the zero protocol at its base, it, it enables special purpose loans that can be issued by underwriters on top of shared liquidity pools. Um, I'll explain that kind of through the next components, um, but basically there are modules that can be deployed uh, that have basically certain loan criteria. Um, so it's like, you know, you, you, if you've used Compound or Aave, you deposit your assets and that's collateral. Um, and then you can take out a loan against it. And then if the, you know, the value of your collateral drops uh, too much, then you can be liquidated. And that's, that's basically, it's a very basic loan type that exists. So what zero confirmation does is, okay, we want to have more special purpose collateral. Uh, so in this in the instance of swap, the collateral is a, um, a not yet uh, fully confirmed Bitcoin transaction. So how can we get away with that is, once we see that Bitcoin transaction, that's kind of your collateral. It's coming to be minted at REN. We issue a loan, but then to do for you to do something, but then you're not allowed to like walk away with those assets. You can take an action with it, like swap it for another asset or deposit it in, into Badger, but that's held in a programmatic escrow that won't really, that won't be released until your Bitcoin transaction uh, fully completes. So that's like an example of, of a module is this, the swap module which is built to, uh, you know, specifically for Bitcoin um, using RenVM uh, to use not yet completed Bitcoin transactions as collateral. You know, it can be extended beyond that. Um, you know, the protocol is fairly uh, flexible, but that's the initial focus. Um, zero swap is going to be the first product or application that we're launched that we're launching, um, and it'll enable zero confirmation trades on sushi swap um, so basically zero swap the application um, is using the swap module that's built on the zero protocol uh, and that the zero swap module is is integrated with sushi swap but it, you know we can deploy it on any decks or any any application on on ethereum so here's just a, a quick overview of how the protocol works you know the zero DAO will manage the controller the controller approves different types of asset pools that can be deployed. In the initial instance, it's really just going to be written BTC as a uh, asset pool. Underwriter basically is, is who initiates all the loans. So there's 
the sushi module that's going to be the, you know, the swap module integrated with sushi and then the underwriter posts some collateral because mm-hmm. you know there's still some risk if let's say a bitcoin transaction comes through there's a swap the swap is done on sushi and then the bitcoin transaction someone does like a replace by fee or, or never actually reaches six confirmations or doesn't reach it in, in a certain amount of time frame those assets can be liquidated to repay the liquidity pool. Um, if there's price movement in that time frame, the liquidity pool would be at risk. Uh, those assets would be at risk, and then the underwriter posts some collateral in case there's any any loss there. So, you know, what are we focused on? You know, we're not it's not trying to be a new DEX. You know, we want to really push on you know swap because that's probably you know swap with BTC. There's a big use case there, probably mainly focused on you know arbitrageurs arguing between. Um, centralized exchanges and uh, DeFi. What we want to be is a Lego piece, like another component of DeFi that all centralized exchanges can deploy. So, um, you know, our main product is really going to be an SDK uh, that will try to get, you know, Curve and SushiSwap and whoever else, um, you know, anyone can actually deploy a new module that uses these other, uses these other decentralized exchanges. But we want to have options on the front ends that people are comfortable with and going to where they can say, Hey, I want to trade my Bitcoin and I have my Bitcoin on my ledger or just, you know, in Coinbase or, or whatever, you want to be able to go to Sushi Swap and trade there directly. So the partnership is really on the front end side and then getting that you know module set up so that you can go there and it's just a little checkbox or something like that. So very much it's like a B2B protocol call to protocol focused application. So just kind of step through the pieces of it. We have the governance layer. Um, As I mentioned, the the token's main job will be to control, uh, manage the controller, which is the controller deploys modules that allows asset deployments, um, new asset pool deployments and sets parameters for for modules. So it really controls everything and that'll largely be around launch kind of controlled by the team multi-sig and then you know, rolled into token control over time, maybe component by component. So, you know, I've kind of broken down the various uh, components here. I guess one thing to talk about on the the REN BTC pool, it's structured as a vault. So we're kind of using the the Badger vault structure uh, such that idle assets will actually be deployed at Badger uh, while they're not being used for swaps. And we'll have some logic for kind of maintaining, you know, 20%, 30% or something like that. availability for for being put to work you know the it's it's different than a usual liquidity pool in that you know more assets isn't better necessarily we really just need as many assets to service the largest loan requests that come through um at at any given time you know basically within an hour time time span so once you know the the loans that are being issued by the protocol only last the length of six confirmations for a Bitcoin transaction, so roughly an hour. So assets can be turned over very quickly. It can have a pretty low, a r- pretty low interest rate, and then still have a decent yield for uh, the liquidity providers, uh, assuming there's decent utilization um, of the assets in the pool. Uh, participant later, so like, okay, that's all great, but like, what can you know, people in this chat or in this presentation? What can you guys do? So Users will be using the sushi swap module to go to sushi.com. They'll have the checkbox that says, hey, I want to trade my Bitcoin directly. Use zero confirmation. Uh, they'll send in their Bitcoin, get DAI, USDC, whatever. When that happens, the module is doing a borrow request to the underwriter. The underwriter just kind of makes sure that everything is, and all these are contracts. It's not like people making specific decisions, but uh, make sure everything meets all the, the various parameters that have been set. The underwriters posting collateral. Uh, one component that isn't built out yet that that we're kind of working on, uh, working on the specifics for is going to be a staking component. So allowing people to kind of use the zero token to back underwriters um, to expand their capacity and provide more security to the um, asset pools. And then on the other side, you have the lenders who are depositing uh, REN BTC, and then they're earning fees from. Uh, those transactions, um, you know, the user is is paying a fee for basic for this loan, and then that gets split between underwriter, staker, um, the lender, and the the DAO. Um, not all of those fees may be in place out of the gate, but that's kind of the, the high level structure. 
short history. Uh, so like I said, we have four founders initially. Um, it's been in development for a year. Um, two of us are, you know, core at Badger, focusing mainly on Badger, but, you know, still kind of contributing uh, to help get zero over the hump. We had, uh, like I said, went through the annex. So it ended up, these numbers were not the final numbers. It was covered in a follow-up note here. So the final numbers were here. Yeah, so we ended up with, you know, 400,000 in, in Badger, 500,000 in USDC. Uh, and, you know, the USDC was really for operational funds to kind of get get over, get to launch. So since then, we've also brought on, oh, I guess we'll get to the, the next next steps. So yeah, what have we been up to? I think it's what people really kind of care about. So uh, been, you know, basically since March, we were able to kind of really dive back into it. We refactored the protocol. Uh, like I said, we had launched in late last year uh, on mainnet and it worked. Uh, it was integrated with Uniswap, but it was kind of a gas hog. Uh, so swap was about 1.2 million Guay. And there are, there are reasons for that, that we made it a little too uh, general purpose, I think, um, out of the gate. So that wasn't really going to work unless you were trading, you know, millions and millions, you know, millions of dollars. Um, also at that time, there weren't great uh, side chains or, you know, layer twos available to, to interact with. So um, both of those things kind of make the current environment a lot better uh, position to launch from. So you know, we were able to refactor the protocol, get it down from 1.2 million way to 350,000 uh, to be, to put that in perspective, uh, just the sushi swap swap alone takes like I think 200, 200 to 250,000. So, you know, I actually got gas down uh, a good bit. Uh, so we're working on the launch plan and the token distribution strategy, uh, working closely with the Badger team on that. Yeah, so we're working on the launch plan. Uh, we're building, you know, out of, an easier to work with SDK. So hopefully we can have people come, you know, come build on top of the protocol more easily. Uh, we've onboarded two devs and an operations uh, person, you know, kind of working part to full time, which has been a big help. Uh, we're working on the tokenomics, governance strategy, things like that. And that's parts, and I'll get to it kind of at the end, but that's parts where we really want to start building the community. And, you know, I think the best stuff we've done at Badger has been the community, you know, with community involvement. And we'd like to do the same thing with, you know, uh, Zero DAO as well. So as we're completing the code, we're, we're kind of preparing for the review uh, from reviews and audits. And then we you know, went through the rebrand, not a whole lot of effort there <laughs> necessarily. But um, yeah, that's kind of what we've been up to since, you know, I guess it was late March was when it was um, uh, completed. Um, and that's been, you know, now we're at the point now where the, the protocol's pretty close. It's being tested on... Uh, we have current state of the protocol contracts are largely done. Um, we're testing on local deployments. The Sushi app is built, ready to be integrated when the, the code's ready. And then uh, we're pretty imminently looking to do kind of a stealth launch on uh, Polygon probably. So we can, you know, a lot of this stuff, it's very, when you're working with a code that has to work with different, you know, numerous different protocols or applications. So like we, you know, we need uh, Ren VM and we need, you know, sushi swap or Uniswap or something like that, or any of, of those things. It's very hard to do that on a test net. Um, and that's what crushed us so with a lot of time last year is trying to run on, on some, you know, on um, rink B to actually do our testing. And then we ended up doing a lot of live testing and then gas went up and then we were just burning money on gas, which wasn't super fun. So what's great is now we can, you know, Ren's on Polygon, Sushi's on Polygon, we can launch on Polygon, we can do test $5 trades and just crank those through um, and do a lot of live money testing. So that's what we're excited about doing, doing hopefully pretty, pretty soon. So yeah, with that, after we'll do a quick demo and then I'll kind of hit on the takeaways and things we're kind of looking, you know, the, the next steps that we're looking to execute on and could use help from the community on, but I will stop sharing. I'll hand it off to you. Flex is the lead dev for Zero DAO. There we go. Take sure through a quick, quick demo. Hey everybody, uh, this is Flex. So uh, we have a quick test suite uh, to show uh, the progress so far on the refactor, and uh, this is going to basically demonstrate where the, uh, the where the flow of the money uh, is when it as it runs through the different steps of uh, issuing a loan 
and then uh, ultimately repaying it. The uh, repayment functionality is not quite finished yet, but uh, it'll, it'll prove at least that it works. So if we run the test, it'll, uh, we, we built everything with hard hat and, uh, and it'll basically walk through the steps. So uh, kind of um, some output, which may, be, uh, may, may provide some clarity on what's happening, but um, this currently is uh, just the, demonstrates the entire stack. And uh, part of that is gonna be a uh, libptp based uh, connector, which is actually mocked here. And uh, so the, ultimately we'd like to show that uh, we, we can issue a loan and that uh, it, it will actually execute the swap. And uh, all the different uh, pieces happen where you deposit your MBDC into the vault and uh, you receive the vault token and that capital is now available for loans and and uh, the rest of the workflow for the swap module. And here we are, the last step here, uh, we're re refactoring the repayment functionality. So we have a little error here, but a um, lot of output here, but uh, basically what we're trying to show is that uh, the funds will move from uh, from the vault to the controller to the strategy, and then uh, ultimately to the swap module when uh, a u end user tries to to make a uh, make a swap to USDC in this case. And we're testing on fork mainnet. Uh, this is, these are exact conditions. Uh, I think so far it's looking good. Yeah, so I guess to step through things a little bit, I mean, the RenBTC vault is the asset pool. You know, the strategy is where we're kind of deploying the funds, you know, idle funds throughout that time frame, And then, uh, yeah, could you just maybe step through like you know, each, like the, what changed in each table real quick? So they're depositing to the vault. Yeah. So uh, it's hard, it's kind of hard even for me to track, but um, so uh, yeah. we deposit in the vault, the end user is gonna put his uh, Ren BTC into the Ren BTC vault and it's gonna be issued some some uh, some vault token. And when the uh, when the deposit happens on the strategy, it moves over wow. into the strategy where it is converted into YB WBTC after being swapped to WBTC. And so that's, and it also keeps a reserve of Ren BTC, which uh, right now is set to two for a threshold. And this is the capital that is available for, for quick loans and to reduce gas costs, we keep that in Ren BTC to avoid having to swap back to Ren BTC when it's time for a loan. Because wow. the, the uh, capital that is not being uh, available for loans immediately is uh, ultimately being put to work in another vault that it delegates to. Uh, the entire system is based off YFI, and uh, we like we like to just maximize all possible yield. We don't want capital sitting there and doing nothing. So um, from there, uh, we let's see if I cover everything. Great. So um, the the final step we have here is that the uh, Ren BDC is issued in the loan and converted to USDC, which is held in the swap module. Uh, for the end user to which he will receive when the repayment is uh, executed. And that is the final step we don't have he shown here, but the next step would be USDC would go to the wallet uh, that from the uh, from the first step. Cool. It's got a, man, uh, Bitcoin to be hit in, in your environment. <laughs> 50, 50 bucks per Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, I think the, the takeaway here is, you know, it's, it's functioning. Um, much more gas efficient uh, we're coming up on having it complete and hopefully you know deploying on uh polygon for live testing um i don't we won't really be sharing that that'll just be internal um pretty soon uh yeah vibes good question on the, the flash loan risk i mean i don't there really isn't any more in my opinion than when you're doing a regular swap um, but it's definitely something that we're thinking about and, and have some concerns with as well. Um, so yeah, it's definitely something we'd be interested in to, you know, integrating flash bots or something, if that makes sense. I don't know, uh, Mitch, I know you've kind of thought about it a good bit too. I don't know if you have anything you want to weigh in on it. Uh, in terms of flash loan risk, it's, you know, it's all done within a single block. Um, so technically this doesn't release anything until <clears throat> the actual uh, confirmation is done on RenVM. Um, so that would be, uh, you know, about, you know, an hour if we were just going by average Bitcoin transaction times. Uh, in terms of being front run, uh, that kind of can be mitigated a few different ways. Um, but mm, the initial pools that we're using are extremely high liquidity. So, you know, USDC, DAI, uh, those those pools aren't going to be able to be front run uh, with any sort of meaningful slippage uh, for this to really be affecting any users any more so than you just performing a swap by yourself uh, from RenBTC to you know die or whatever it is. Yeah, so I guess the, the takeaway there on the 
slippage comp components, one of the things that we will be, uh, one of the control points will be a whitelist for available assets to trade. Uh, because even without MEV risk, there's larger risk to the protocol if we let people trade very illiquid assets because there's gonna be much higher slippage and like the slippage is where um there's risk to the protocol where if, you know say just there's some super illiquid token you initiate your uh, bitcoin transaction you get the bitcoin loan you sell it uh, for that there's a massive slippage and then when you have liquidated yeah i mean vibes have you been looking into that stuff for sure like hop in the discord like love to would love for someone to kind of do an analysis on where we could how we could improve there. Our, our first step is going to be like, let's just be risk averse and just use whitelists and things like that to like, you're only allowed to trade these things on these locations. And then we'll start with that. And then, you know, slowly expand further out. So launch plan, you know, we're going to finish local testing, launch on Polygon, mentioned that uh, we'll, as the testing is being completed locally, we're going to engage uh, to get some audits done. Uh, then, you know, what we kind of really want the community to kind of come in and, and run with is let's determine like the in initial token drop details, distribution mechanics. We also want to make sure that we're not running afoul of any regulations as, as best as we can be aware. So talk to the Badger Legal Council, build out the community and the team, um, open up, open the application to, to wider use. So I, I would expect the application to be available for people to use um, before the, we do like the token drop DAO component. Um, but, you know, we'll be taking recommendations from the lawyers and from the community as we kind of work forward. Uh, so zero token, like what, what, what will it be for? So it's going to be uh, the governance token for the zero protocol at its baseline. Um, it'll man eventually manage, manage the controller. Uh, and it'll control like the protocol protocol fee variable, uh, which will be taken from you know all loans. So that that'll all be controlled by the the token. Um, and that might start with just snapshot voting, uh, multi sig uh, action to start, and then we'll kind of maybe layer those components on um, as as it goes it goes along. Um, so that's functional. You know, how does it benefit from the protocol? You know, all that stuff is still kind of in the works. Um, you know, we're focusing on getting the, the actual apps live first, and it's unsure, unclear if all this, you know, any of this will be built out before launch or not. And, you know, like I said, this is something where you definitely want your community to kind of come in and help us get over the hump. Um, but, you know, I think if we want to use it as a way to incentivize integrators to use the protocol. So whether it's giving to people who are actually trading or like Sushi themselves for sending flow through zero confirmation, that's been an interesting potential use case and then, you know, staking uh, to back the underwriters and provide added security to the um, asset pools, the vaults, I think is, you know, something that we makes a lot of sense, but just have to work out the right mechanic for it. Uh, so looking forward, uh, you know, what are we looking to do? Uh, you know, how can we extend the protocol to make it, you know, function with Badger products? Once we're up and running, we'll look, say, you can maybe, you know, flash mint into a uh, vault token like is that beneficial to people you know the, the main thing that we're providing able to do this quickly is you know avoiding slippage but then also um also just your time and attention you don't want to like start a shift and then have to come back and remember what you're doing an hour later you can just get it all done now and know that when your bitcoin transaction clears whatever asset you acquired by taking whatever action will be you know sent to your your address be forwarded on to you so um, does it make sense to you know, mint IBB, IBBTC quickly with native Bitcoin. Does it make sense to do fast set deposits? So we'll see what's going on there. Look to build out more swap modules for, you know, Curve and Zapper are kind of our next uh, targets. And then, uh, you know, I think where we see this really going long term is where can, you know, we want to be a component of what, we, what we're kind of assuming will eventually emerge as a, you know, cross chain decks where you can be on any chain and at any time access liquidity on all the other chains and trade into that liquidity immediately and you know where can zero fit within that uh, so we can get liquidity across all different chains um, do we need the you know which partners can we you know start working with to bridge the, those liquidity gaps and kind of be a protocol that greases the wheels of those those transactions so i think that's kind of the ultimate 
end state of where we fit in. You know, people that are familiar with ThorChain have some capabilities like that, but you know, I think you could build out something very similar um, using Ren, using uh, Zero, uh, and using existing liquidity on all on all the various chains. Um, and it's built using kind of composable Lego pieces versus kind of trying to centralize, put everything together. Uh, so what are we looking for? How can people help? Uh, devs are always welcome. Um, you know, QA and front end are kind of two areas that we're, we're uh, specifically looking for right now to help us kind of finish testing, review, you know, build out the token page, monitoring tools, things like that would be great to have help with. Uh, designers and UX uh, would also be awesome. That's something we definitely don't have, you know, great representation for on the team. Um, you know, token nerds, tokenomics people, DGENs, people that have experienced a lot of different protocols um, would love someone to, to come in and help or even run with working out the various kind of, um, you know, staking mechanic, do some modeling around that. Uh, that would be awesome. Uh, NFT artists, I think we're thinking, you know, it'd be great to do some cool stuff around launch with like some NFTs, whether they're through Badger or not, um, you know, if you know anyone or are one yourself, come along. And then, uh, you know, grants coordinator, I think we, you know, we're going to try to leverage Gitcoin. We can settle, set aside some tokens for for that. But as we found Badger, it's been very, it's been a great resource, but it it's definitely time intensive to interact with. So if there's someone who's kind of familiar with Gitcoin and have some technical experience, but not, you don't have to be super dev, um, would be awesome. You know, right now we're, uh, we set aside a chunk of the token supply for early contributors, people that kind of help us get to launch. Um, and then like I said, we got the operational funds from Badger. So if you want to come contribute, you know, we can, you know, we're offering compensation uh, for folks. So, you know, how to get involved, uh, join the Discord. You know, join the Discord, got a couple of channels going in there. It's not super active, but great for that to change. And you know, it's a community driven project is, you know, it, it, it kind of has been that way the whole time, even though it's been a, a small number of us kind of working on it, you know, there's plenty of opportunities to help and contribute and kind of take ownership of things. Like I said, you know, Mitch and I are, you know, full-time a Badger and kind of helping, helping with zero. And we've got a couple uh, full-time folks, you know, we started as community members at Badger first before launch and then launched and now we're kind of here full time. So you never know how, how things will play out. Uh, so if you're interested in checking it out, contributing, if it seems interesting, you know, hop in. So that's the whole presentation. Does anyone have any specific areas you want me to dig more into or have any questions? Feel free to throw in the chat, speak up, uh, we'll let's chat. Nobody, nothing. I guess one thing I didn't touch on, um, you know, the, the deal that went through, um, the token breakdown, uh, Badger will be getting 10% uh, of the supply uh, 10% of the supply will also be going to Badger holders. Um, we're working out the mechanic for which that, that'll be distributed, whether it'll just be like an airdrop or have to do something with your Badger, like lock it up for a period of time or something like that. If you want to help weigh in on that, hop in the Discord, love to get people's opinions. Um, maybe even take that conversation to the Badger Discord uh, and start getting people's people's feedback. So yeah, Badger is getting a, a good 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 chunk of um, the, uh, getting a good chunk of, chunk of it here. Poe oh, yes. yeah, we'll use curve one inch pair swap UNIV3 for NBTC, WBTC swaps. Um, it can use whatever we want. The initial the initial module will be just for sushi swap. The the question for regardless of location for NBTC, WBTC is um, for N0 confirmation is how much value are you getting? So if you have to pay, you know, another 0 0.1, 0 0.2 or 0.2% for like the zero confirmation or the, 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 the zero shift fee, if the only benefit that you're getting is it happening in an hour faster is that worth it to you right um maybe it is if it is great <laughs> that expands the market but you know we're assuming the initial uh drive will be people that want to actually trade bitcoin for other assets um because there's you know issue you know the crypto is very volatile so we can change you know prices can change very much in you know, within an hour so that small fee hopefully you know added to the um, convenience of doing things quickly will be uh, worth it for folks to, to not have to worry about prices moving on them while they're waiting for their Bitcoin to get across. But yeah, I don't, I don't know if the RenBTC, WBTC will be a big drive. Um, and as far as the other locations, um, we can use whatever. It would be interesting to integrate with, you know, something like one inch, like an aggregator. Um, 
you know, with Zapper, Zapper is an aggregator. The reason I had them listed is just we've talked to them. It's a zero X based aggregator, just like Matcha and One Inch. So if someone comes in and builds that out, or we work on it with them, then uh, you know, it should be pretty easy to to leverage for the other ones. But yeah, I mean, the whole Meta Dex idea is that there's some aggregator, possibly even at the Ren level, but an aggregator that's across across chains, and maybe it's just across EVM compatible chains but then finding the right balance of trades uh, across all, all chains to source that liquidity for whatever trade you're trying to make. And then, you know, zero can fit in there uh, to, to facilitate that, that trade. Cool. Yeah. Anyone else? Any other, any other questions? I don't know. Um, Mitch, anything you wanted to, to, to weigh in on or, or share or anything from your side that you want to call out that you maybe hit on for, for what we want people and what kind of folks we're looking for to come Basically, what, where we're at is uh, the front end proof of concept app is all but built, um, and we're working on finalizing some uh, developer uh, design kits, so an SDK for actually integrating this. Um, so, like places like if Sushi or Curve or whatever wanted to use it, they'd be able to easily integrate it into their front ends um, and build it out. So, people that are familiar with that um, type of stuff that would probably be who we're looking for um you know aside from that uh we are well on our way to getting this out to the public yeah yeah we've got um we've got badger folks in there we've got a lot of ren folks in there two great communities if you are interested just in getting involved it's a pretty you know it's a various it's not like a big hype uh discord um so if you like you know just like DeFi stuff you're maybe interested in dipping your toe into contributing uh, into something. Uh, it's very low, low pressure <laughs> right now. Uh, environment, get in, ask some questions, be happy to have you. Um, and, you know, we can find stuff for you to run with. What's your core competency? You know, we need people with finance experience, you know, people with design experience, dev experience. Um, even if you have none of that and you're just like shooting the shit and being a good active community member, like, you know, go hop in. Those are great too. So um, definitely need all of it. Um, we're going to build things out now and excited to get this out in the hands of people and start figuring out like where we can fit in. I think a lot of DeFi protocols, you don't even know really what you have until you're, you're live and out there, you know, Badger. I don't think anyone could predict that Badger was going to look like what it does now back when it launched in December. Um, and that's not a bad thing. So, uh, you know, hop in. We'll we'll get it out there, and we'll we'll figure out we'll work together. To figure out how we uh, how we push this thing forward. But, um, otherwise, yeah. Thanks everyone for hopping on. This is great. 50, 50 plus folks. Pretty solid turnout. Appreciate it. Uh, if you have any other questions, don't hesitate to hop in Zero Discord and ask there, or ping me. Um, you know, directly if you like a direct answer. More than happy to to weigh in. But um, yeah, excited to push forward and get more information out there and get this damn thing live tweet because we'll close it up uh will uh thanks for putting it together everyone thanks for being flexible and hopping platforms catch you all later yeah thanks everybody and apologies for the mix up we'll figure out a solution uh po apps you can dm me on uh on discord and we'll have a, a new po app distro solution up soon